When listening to a podcast, do you ever wonder how many times it took to get it right? Everything sounds clean, the volume is perfect, and the show has a good flow to it. This could be the result of a good performer, but everyone makes mistakes. That is when an editor comes in. From books to podcasts, an editor is there to cut out all the fluff and make sure that the story that is being told makes sense. In this episode of On the Mic with Ad Results Media, Lindsay Boyd, Nathan Spell, and myself, Freddy Trejo, talk about the process that I go through in editing this podcast. So let's get started. That's the great thing about Stamps.com. They grow with you. As much fun as I had, I couldn't wait to get back to my sleep number bed. Yep. I love my third love bras. They're hands down the most comfortable bras I've ever owned. I love making Blue Apron. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's my me time. So, Freddie, thank you for taking the time to answer some questions that Nathan and I have. We spend so much time in front of the mic, and we don't really get to see a lot of the editing process. So I kind of just want to jump in, and why don't you tell us a little bit about what defines editing? Editing, to me, is finding the story within the raw audio. The whole goal for me is to make sure that I'm adding and removing parts to make everything more cohesive. Whatever the story is, it could be a crime podcast, an educational podcast, an ad podcast. From beginning to end, it all makes sense. I think that's really interesting to think of editing as storytelling from that perspective. That's really cool. It, so it helps a lot because yeah. it, it makes you think in different ways because you look at something and it's not just A, B, C, one, two, three you're trying to find ways to connect everything together. So how do you start? Like where, where does that process really begin? So the editing process actually starts before the editing. It starts at recording. Depending on how you are capturing your audio, it could be a USB mic, a interface connecting to a XLR microphone. You want to make sure that the gain or the sensitivity of the mic for everyone who's on the podcast is equal. You don't want something to be peaking. And when I say peaking, it's basically distorting the audio. You want to make sure that everyone stays in the green. Some interfaces will have a screen or some way of monitoring your audio. If everything's in the green, perfect. It's, it's, it's pleasant. It's not going to be distorted. Then it goes into yellow. That's your okay. It's kind of loud, but you can still work with it. The red, when it's peaking, when it's distorted, that audio that is recorded in that section can't be used. Quiet audio can be edited. Distorted audio cannot. You can't fix distorted audio. That's just how it is. It's just distorted. You want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So when you are working with us on, on the mic, what are you monitoring to make sure that our levels are even? When we, we start recording a podcast, I always make sure that I am in there. The idea is that I want to make sure that I'm sitting there, setting everything up, and looking at my software, my editing software, which I use as Audition. And when I'm recording y'all, there is a meter on Audition that shows me how everyone is sounding and an overall meter that shows how everybody together sounds. So I have individual meters for you, Lindsay and Nathan, and then I have an overall meter for the whole show. And I make sure that if the overall meter is red, I have to go and change the gain. And if, say, Lindsay, you'll say something, but it's being picked up on Nathan's mic, I make sure I try to reposition the mic so it doesn't pick up what you're saying, so I won't have this weird echo effect. I always, 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 always recommend people who are going to be editing to listen to the podcast as it's being recorded, because you are there to make any adjustments on the fly, to make your <laughs> future work easier. So it sounds like there are multiple ways that folks can kind of get a handle on levels, whether it be through a program like Audition or I've never used it, but I've heard other people use Audacity. Is that Audacity is a really good free option to use? It's not user friendly. It's 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 it, you can use it, you can record, and that's it. But if you want to go more into details and, and editing, it's it's a lot more difficult to do it. I used to use Audacity because it was easy. I record what I need to do, and then I would actually export that audio into. Audacity audition and edit there because it was just easy to press go and not even worry about it. but when it comes to the nitty-gritty of editing i do everything on audition now now that we have a better interface the uh was it premix 6 that we use and and that one's interesting because it's a field recorder and it has a screen on it so everything that i need is on there too so if i need to monitor everything i can just look at the screen and know that we're okay but since it also connects to the computer i have two types 
of monitoring. I have one on my interface and I have one on the computer. So that's one thing you always have to make sure too. You want to test the audio because your interface might say one thing because it's picking it up directly from the mics, but your computer, your audacity or your audition might say another because it's picking it up straight from the interface. So it's one of those things you always have to make sure before you say we're done, you want to make sure that everything sounds even. I feel like that was something that I kind of ran into because the premix that we use at the studio is part of what I snagged and brought home with me so I could record from home. And I know that if it's turned up too loud, it'll pick up everything and then you'll just have this like buzz in the background. But it's not something that I necessarily see on audition when I'm recording. Another thing, Lindsay, we brought up a few episodes ago, one of the most important things to have are headphones and an editor's best friend are headphones. If you have cheap quality headphones, it's okay to start off with it, but you probably won't hear the full dynamic range, the lows, the highs, the bass, the treble, the mids, these things that eventually as you go on into editing and, and dig deeper and experiment more, become more apparent. And with good quality headphones, you can automatically tell, oh, hey, I hear buzzing. Where's that buzzing coming from compared to Walmart headphones where you put them in and you're like, I hear buzzing all the time. I don't know where that buzzing's coming from. I think it's the headphones. <laughs> right, right. Quality, quality cables, quality headphones. When you approach editing, how do you approach that process? The idea of having a roadmap is really important because it allows you to make sure that you have an idea how the podcast is going to pan out. You want to make sure from beginning to end, you know how this is going to work. You know from beginning that this is what they're going to talk about. This is where they're going to lead off to, and this is how they're going to end. Having that roadmap as an editor allows you to know where you're going to do your cuts. Once you've gotten your audio and you've uploaded them into, for me, it's audition. I always use the multi-track view because you're not just editing one thing, you're editing multiple things at the same time. So once you've imported your audio into the multi-track view, you want to make sure the first thing you do before anything is that you group those tracks. By grouping these tracks, right-click group tracks, you allow Audition to say these two tracks are now together. They're linked together. They're grouped together. And anytime you do an edit to one track, it does it to the other one. This is where you start cutting. This is where you start shortening. This is where you start listening for breaths or oohs, for ahs, for these small little ticks that we as humans have. And that's where you start cutting it. But if you don't group them, if you only edit one track at a time, you have to make sure that these other tracks are being edited in the same time. So let's say, Lindsay, in 10 seconds in, you say something wrong and you want me to cut it. I'll cut it. But if I don't group those two tracks together, your track and Nathan's track. Now they're different links. Right. And now I have to go to Nathan's track, cut 10 seconds in, and I have to do that for every... No. Don't do that. Group them, cut them together, edit them together. Make your life easier. So it sounds like if you don't group your tracks, you're basically doing double, maybe even triple work, depending on how many microphones you recorded from. Right. And if I edit something on Nathan's track after I already edited your track, I have to go back to your track and edit all the Nathan's edits as well. Group your tracks. Make your life easier. Group them. Treat them as one track. Once you've already grouped your audio, once you've already edited and cut down and follow your roadmap, this is the time where you want to make sure that your levels, how everything sounds, how loud everything is, sounds, is equal. Like you were saying, Lindsay, now that we're recording in three different locations, three different interfaces, three different mics, our, our volumes won't be the same. So it is up to me to make sure that once I have everything in the multi-track view, it gives me this nice little meter, a gain meter, an audio meter, a, the mixer that shows each track's volume and then the master track's overall volume. Oh, that's super helpful. It is because I can now see the master track and say, okay, I wanted to make sure that it's not going to go over negative nine decibels. So I'll have that. That's my goal. I'm making sure nothing goes over that. And I'll play through the podcast. And if I see something that say, Lindsay, you say something and it makes us all laugh. And we start going over that line that I've put, that threshold that I've put. I go into each of our own individual tracks and I lower it and make sure that it's not crossing that line. This is, takes a little bit more time because you have to listen through everything first and make sure nothing's too loud. Once you start getting better at it, you can just look at the waveforms and just know automatically, okay, that one's too loud, that one's too low, and you can bring it up, bring it down manually on your own. It's very important to make sure that the final volume mix is, well, is even. Yeah, it's even and finished. You just want to make sure that's fine because you don't want to listen to it. And next thing you know, 10 minutes into a podcast, it's super loud on one end and super quiet on the next end. 
You just don't want that. We've probably all experienced at one point or another with a podcast that we've tried to listen to. I know that I have, where one host will just be totally blown out, and then another, I'm, you know, having to turn up the volume just to hear. It's like, are they in the same room? Like, what's... Yeah, how did this happen? the same <laughs> podcast. It's, it's especially frustrating on road trips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When you're when you're driving and uh, y- one guy you've got and and he's great levels awesome can totally hear his side of the story and then his co-host is just like hey everybody <laughs> that or they come in just, the road is loud yeah <laughs> you can hear <laughs> you can hear your air conditioning over the the audio and sometimes you have people who just come in way too hot and you're just sitting there everything sounds even in that one person is like hey and you're like oh my god that scared me. Oh, and then you put your headphones in. Yes. Yep. With your headphones. It's the scariest (laughs) thing because you'll be standing there listening or whatever you're doing. And that one person, that one section that you forget to equal out, just blast it and you freak out. Once you have your volume down and everything sounds and looks because you're also using that mixer to make sure everything is underneath that threshold that you decided. This is where your detailed cuts have to come in. You already did your main cuts of like how you want things to go through the podcast, how the podcast gets to A to Z. Now it's going in and cutting down breaths, cutting down ums, these small things that you won't pick up. At first, when you're doing your major cuts, you won't listen to. It's fine. But these are the things that really add time to your podcast, really add a mess to your podcast. It sounds unpolished. Right. You want to polish it up. This is where you start going in there and giving some elbow grease and making sure everything's clean. Everything sounds even. Once you've done a cut that may require you to cut out a word, uh, um, whatever, go back and listen to it. Go back 10 seconds. Listen to it. Does it sound natural? Does it sound like that person didn't say um? Close your eyes. Go back and listen to it. Did you, the editor, catch the cut? If you didn't catch it, that means your listener won't hear it because they don't know what they're looking for. But you do. That's that's how I always do it. That's If you ever walk into the editing room, you'll see me with my head down, eyes closed, just listening to something over and over again because I want to make sure that cut that I did is not noticeable at all. Once it's not noticeable, I go to my next cut. Don't be scared of cutting content out. Sometimes a scene is really good. Sometimes a conversation is really good, but it doesn't add to the whole. It, it can be just like a tangent and you just have to cut that out. Sometimes it can be something that was repeated. I do that a lot. I repeat and I don't mean to. But with the power of editing, no one would know that I, I repeated myself two times, three times. Cut them all out. Have it once. Perfect. This is where mixing comes in. This is where you go in the equalizer. Do you need a de Does this section need a low pass? Does it need a high pass? A low cut? High cut? What does that all mean? The one thing I'm going to say for everyone as an editor, learn how to use your equalizer. Your equalizer is your best friend. If you're doing a podcast similar to what we're doing right now, three different people, three different situations, three different microphones, everything different, this equalizer, well, does what the name says. It equalizes everything. One of the things that I have learned through editing is that I can explain to you the numbers, I can explain to you what it means, I can use tinny, I can use bassy, all these terms, all this jargon, but it won't stick until you actually experiment by going in, saying some silly phrase, record it, and then edit with your EQ. Listen to each frequency, what do they do? How do they change the sound? You have to experiment, 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 experiment. It's the only way you can actually learn what each slider does. You have to listen to the changes. You have to put your ears to the test. In this section of the podcast, I'm going to do some edits to an audio sample. I'm going to showcase the raw audio first. She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. Now we're going to add some compression. This brings up all the quiet parts and brings down all the loud parts. She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. Now we're going to use a de on the raw audio. This brings down the harsh S sounds. She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. This next edit is going to be using a high pass or a low cut. This allows the high end frequencies of an audio to come through. She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. By contrast, a low pass high cut filter brings out the lower frequencies of an audio. She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And for the last example, this audio has gone through the full editing process. 
She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. With those examples, you have a better understanding how those filters and modifications work. At this point, you're probably thinking, okay, I've done all this, now what? You export it, you listen to it, and you use your ears and say, is that good or is that not good? And once you've done that, share it to someone else. Uh, Lindsay, you know that every time I finish editing something, I send it to you. Nate, you know when I finish editing, I send it to you because there's a point of editing where you will just have tunnel vision or tunnel hearing, whatever you want to call it, but you get fixated and you just don't worry about anything else. You get fixated to the point where everything sounds okay and sometimes it doesn't. Just because you think it sounds good, it might not. Have an extra pair of ears, listen to it. Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that after editing, after listening, after doing all these things, that the story that is being told sounds as best. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe for updates on future episodes and leave us a comment with your feedback, questions, or ideas for future segments. If you would like more info on Ad Results Media and what we do, please visit us online at adresultsmedia.com. This podcast is an Ad Results Media production.